सिल्वर क्रिस्टलाइज इन एफ सी सी लैटिस इफ एज लेंथ ऑफ ए सेल इज दिस मच सेंटीमीटर एंड डेंसिटी दिस मच कैलकुलेट द एटोमिक मास ऑफ द सिल्वर सो वी यूज द सिंपल फॉर्मूला डेंसिटी ऑफ द यूनिट सेल इज इक्वल टू मास ऑफ यूनिट सेल डिवाइड बाई द वॉल्यूम यूनिट सेल दिस इज द मास ऑफ यूनिट सेल दिस इज द वॉल्यूम यूनिट सेल सो दिस इज द एम इज द वेट दैट इज द हाउ मच एटोमिक मास ऑफ द सिल्वर इज दैट इज द मोलर मास एंड दिस विल बी ए क्यूब इंटू डेंसिटी इन टू अवगार्डो नंबर बाय जेड सो ए विल बी दिस मच वैल्यू एंड डेंसिटी विल बी दिस मच वैल्यू एंड अवगार्डो नंबर बी दिस मच वैल्यू एंड जेड विल बी फोर इफ सॉल्व इट यू विल गेट द एटोमिक मास ऑफ द सिल्वर विल बी हंड्रेड सेवन पॉइंट थ्री सिक्स यू ए क्यूबिक सॉलिड इज मेड अप ऑफ ए टू एलिमेंट्स पी एंड क्यू एटम्स क्यू आर प्रेजेंट एट द कॉर्नर ऑफ द क्यूब एंड एटम्स पी एट द बॉडी सेंटर What is the formula of the compound, and what are the coordination numbers of P and Q? So we say contribution Q by atom is how much? Eight into one by eight. That is equal to one. And P atom is one. So formula will be P one and Q one. So it will be P Q. And coordination number of this unit cell will be eight because this is occupying the. This is a. This is the unit cell of body center cubic center structures. That's why coordination will be your eight. Next question: Niobium crystallizes in a BCC. If the density is eight point five five gram per centimeter cube, calculate the atomic radius. And atomic mass of this niobium is ninety three u. Now density of unit cell is mass of unit cell divided by the volume. So a cube will be z m into density into Avogadro number. So z is two because this is the BCC. M is the ninety three. Density is eight point five five Avogadro. On solving, a will get this answer. Now we know the relationship in the BCC root two a is equal to four r, so r will be this much value. Now a value is given, substitute this value, so you will get answer one forty three pico meter. One point one four. So if the radius of the octahedral void is r and the radius of the atoms is close packing is capital R, derive relation between small r and capital R. So in case of octahedral void, so this octahedral void is surrounded by these atoms, like this. So this structure, this is the small r. This is the capital R. You can see capital R from this boundary to this boundary. So this is the A, B, C, and D. So A, C will be your two r. This is the small r, and this is two capital R. So A, B, C, D is cross section of square. So A, B is equal to B, C is equal to two r. So A, C is equal to two r plus two r. So by using the Pythagoras theorem, if you take the triangle A, B, C, so A, C square equal to A, B square plus B, C square, and A, C nothing but the two r plus two is small r. Small r is the Uh, radius of the void. So you will you are getting eight r square. The so two r plus two uh, r will be root two into r. So two r if you solve it, you will get this equation. And finally, r by capital R is equal to root two minus one. So root two value is one one four one four minus one. This will be zero point four one four. So R void by square will be zero point four one four. So this is the uh, relation between small R and capital R. Now we see copper crystallizes into a FCC lattice with as length this much, so that the calculated density is in agreement with this. Mention value of eight point nine two gram per centimeter cube. Again, uh, we know that uh, density of unit cell is uh, mass of the unit cell divided by the volume of unit cell. So Z is given four, molar mass is given, A is given. If I got to number, just substitute this value. On substituting, eight point nine six gram per centimeter cube is the density of this copper. So now we'll see one more question. So in this questions. Analysis shows that nickel oxide has uh, formula Ni zero point nine eight oxide. So, what fraction of nickel uh, exists as Ni two plus and Ni three plus ions? Now, let us see. Nickel is electrically neutral in this compound. So, this is a non-stoichiometric compound. So, in this case, again, nickel is electrically neutral. But nickel have two type of ions. One is the plus two state. One is the plus three state. So, let us take plus two state is x, and plus three x is point ninety eight total minus x. So, x become Ni two plus. Rest will be your Ni three plus. Now, 
total charge by the Ni2 plus and Ni3 plus will be equal to the total negative charge by the oxide ion. So charge of this is equal to charge of this one. This is neutral, so it will be equal to each other. So we'll take the average of charge of this one. So average means number of atoms into average charge and plus number of atoms of Ni3 plus into the average charge that is the plus 3, which is equal to 2. So on solving, you will get x equal to 0 0.94. So fraction of Ni2 plus will be how much? So 0.94 by 0 0.98. So you will get 9.0.96 or 96%. Similarly, for Ni3 plus 1.0.96 is the fraction. So you will get 0 0.04 means nickel 3 plus is 4% present in, in this stoichiometric compound. So plus 3 is 4% and plus 2 is 96% in this oxides. What is a semiconductor? Describe two main types of semiconductor and contrast their conduction mechanism. So semiconductor, this, these are the solid materials uh, whose electric conductivity lies between those of the typical metallic conductor insulators. So they possess conductivity in the range of 10 per square to 10 to the power minus 9 per ohm per centimeter. The conductivity of semiconductors it increases with increasing temperature. As the defects like a holes, it will increase with increase of temperature. So when the holes is increasing, then the uh, conductivity of this conductor also increases. Now this is two types. One is called as the intrinsic semiconductor. Second is the extrinsic, intrinsic and extrinsic. So let us see one by one. What is the meaning of intrinsic semiconductor? So these are the insulators at room temperature and become semiconductor when temperature is raised. For example, silica and germanium. So in normal conditions, they contain covalent bonds such as covalent and no free electrons. So in normal conditions, they have covalent bonds but they do not contain free electrons. However, when you heat it, the some covalent bonds are broken and they give rise to free electrons. These free electrons make them as semiconductors. So we can understood through this uh, mechanism also. So this is the uh, germanium so all bonds are uh, is there you can see germanium is bonded by the four electrons so all bonds are covalent bonds so when you heat it these bonds are broken so when this broke it on blocking this become free electrons so this will conduct like this one so on blocking this one suppose uh, then it it breaks then it will form this bonds it form new bond so it this in this way electrons are moving to bond wise so along the bond it is moving so it is called as the intrinsic semiconductor what is extrinsic? It is impurity of lower or higher group element. So they are formed by adding impurities of either lower group element or higher group element. So adding means actually it is called as doping. So in this case again bond is broken but again by doping the things will be different. Let us see. Uh, there are two types. One is the N type semiconductor and second is the P type of semiconductors. So doping of higher group element uh, impurities forms the n type for example arsenic is doped with the germanium arsenic is doped with germanium so arsenic is pentavalent germanium is germanium is tetravalent so one more ele extra electron is present in this lattice you can see an extra electron makes the mixture n type and current carriers are negatively charged so hence it is called n type so this is germanium germanium makes the four bonds so one is comes with the uh, doping doping means arsenic has five electrons so four electrons will undergo bonding with each other one electron extra again so one electron extra so this will move towards the uh, this will uh, moves and it will uh, it will increase the conductivity of the metal this extra electrons present in the arsenic so this is called as the n type of semiconductor now next is p type semiconductor so impurity of lower group forms electron deficient bond in the structure Electron deficiency develops the P hole. P hole is called as the positively charged. So on application of potential difference, these P holes they conduct the electric current at absolute zero or at low temperature. The, these P holes are localized around the gallium atoms. However, at normal temperature, the valence electron of germanium it uh, gains sufficient energy and jumps into the P hole. The P hole moves in a point direction to the electron. And the P-host act as a current carrier. So, germanium is a gallium is the 
tri uh, sorry trivalent and why the germanium is a tetravalent so you can see this is the lattice structure of germanium so this gallium is inserted between this uh, germanium so germanium is making four bonds but gallium has a three bonds so three bond means one electron is present with the germanium okay and uh, gallium has no electron so what will happen this will uh, electron will move this direction and host will move this direction so when this bond is broken it will go this side when this bond is broken it will go this side so like this it is falling along the bonds so electric current will follow along the bonds non stoichiometric cuprous oxide cu2o can be prepared in the lab so in this oxide copper to oxygen a ratio is slightly less than 2 is to 1 so can you account for the fact that uh, this uh, substance is a p type semiconductor now you see in uh, cuprous oxide cu ratio is how much it is slightly less than 2 is to 1 it is slightly less so this is given here so it shows that some of uh, some of the copper plus ions are missing from the lattice points when the ratio this one this means that copper plus ion uh, is lesser at the lattice point so in order to maintain the electrical neutrality so since it is missing but the electrical neutrality is maintained this means that two copper ions will be replaced by the two copper single ions so q plus ions will be replaced by the cu2 plus ions so that the electrical neutrality is maintained you can see and there is two charge of plus ion this is the one charge definitely one hole will be there so it will create a p hole this p hole is called as the positive hole and this substance behave as a p type semiconductor due to the presence of p hole you can see this diagram so this is the copper this is the copper plus copper plus copper oxygen oxide and this is the oxide so oxide so these are the oxide this is the oxide copper copper so this is a plus 2 plus 2 means this would be also copper cu plus so when one two co is missed and it is replaced by the cu2 plus so this will create a hole that positive hole will cause the conductivity in the uh, in the compound of q plus oxides so this is our answers ferric oxide crystallizes in hexagonal force packing array of oxide ions with two out of every three octahedral holes occupied by ferric ions derive the formula of ferric oxide so number of oxide ions is how much it is n then octahedral will be also voice will be also n because uh, in uh, lattice the uh, this oxide ions at the uh, lattice point and the voice all are equal to each other so number of uh, ferric ions will be your 2 by third of n as per the question because uh, two ions is occupied after every three octahedral voice so iron 3 plus and o2 will be your 2 by third of n is to n so this iron is 2 by third of n and oxide is n so ratio will be 2 is to 3 and molecular formula is Fe2O3. Classify each of the following as being either a P type or N type of semiconductor. So one is when germanium is doped with indium and boron is doped with silicon. So in case of first when germanium is doped with the indium, so what happens? This is a P type of semiconductor because it is doping with the lower group. So indium is the lower group of uh, germanium, indium is group 13, this germanium is group 14. So definitely it will give you P type of semiconductor. Similarly, a B dot with silicon is the N type of semiconductor because it is doping with the higher group impurities. So definitely what will happen? So it will give you N type of semiconductors. A gold whose atomic uh, radius is uh, 0.4144 nanometer and it crystallizes in a FCC. What is the length of the side of the cell? So for FCC unit cell, we know that root 2a is equal to 4r where a is the side of the cell. So we have to find out a. So r is given. So r will be 4 into this much. So a will be your multiplied by 4 into this value divided by root 2. So 0. Uh, uh, 407 nanometer is the length of the side of the cell. Aluminium crystallizes in a cubic uh, closed pack structures. Its uh, metallic radius is 125 picometer. So a question what is the length of the side of the unit cell and second how many unit cells are there in one centimeter of radius. 
So again, this structure is FTC structure. So for FTC structures, we have relationship root 2A equal to 4R, where A is the length of the unit cell. So A is equal to root 2R. So R is given 125 picometer. On solving, we will get 352.3 picometer. Now we will see the second part. So volume of the unit cell is A cube in second part. So A is given 3.53.3 into 10 to the minus 2 uh, to the power 3 centimeter cube. This we already derived. So on solving, this is the centimeter cube. So how many number of unit cells are present in this volume? So just we will divide 1 by these values. So you will get 2.265 into 10 power 22. So this is the number of unit cell in uh, 1 centimeter cube. Next question. If NaCl is dropped with 10 power minus 3 mole percent strontium chloride, what is the concentration of cations vacancies? So we have given uh, this is mole percent 10 power minus 3 mole percent. What does this mean? This means that out of 100 moles of NaCl, it is dropped with 10 power minus 3 moles of strontium chloride. Means if you take one mole, so how many strontium chloride will be there? It will be 10 power minus 5. This means that uh, if you take a one ion of strontium 2 plus, it will introduce one cation vacancy because NS plus is having one charge. So, for uh, balancing the neutralizing this plus 2 charge, we require two Na plus charge. So, there will be one cation vacancy always. A two sodium ion will be slightly replaced by the one strontium 2 plus. So, one cation is left vacant. Therefore, concentration of the cationic vacancy will be your mole concentration of strontium chloride multiplied by Avogadro number. So, this is the number of cations vacancy will left. Explain 12, 16 or 13, 15 group compound. Now zinc sulfide and cadmium selenium are the example of 12, 16. This is the 12, this is 16 the group, this is the group, this is also 12, this is 16. Similarly, aluminum, phosphide and gallium arsenic are the example of 13, 15. So this is the gallium is 13, aluminum 13, phosphide arsenic are 15 respectively. So these solid materials are not perfect. So they will show some amount of effect. 